Hello, good evening, and welcome to another Tuesday night live session here in the Honey Block with me, OC Edge of Four. I'm happy to have you here. I'm happy to have you in the session. I hope you've had a fantastic week. I hope that everything has been great. If you're a parent, I hope you haven't been too stressed out buying the back to school uniform, queuing up, buying things. I thank God that my wife did that job this year. I didn't have to do it. I missed out this year, so I'm quite happy. I escaped. I had work to do. And if you listen to the podcast, I did put two fingers in the air in, with both hands and do inverted commas. Now, I was very busy, very, very busy. But um, yes, my wife did that this year. I do not envy anybody who had to go out and do that shopping because it was, it, it was, it was kind of crazy out there. You know, masks, queuing, social distancing. It's just, yeah, it was mad. So good luck to everybody. And all the best to everybody who's sending their children back to school. Are you not relieved? Are you not now grateful for the teachers? Are you not? If you're a parent and you've got children and you had your children for this whole lockdown, are you not grateful for teachers? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you salute them. And we all salute them. We're very happy that they've been working so hard this whole time to make sure that we can have peace in our homes yet again during the daytime. Okay, we've got a fantastic show for you tonight. Tonight's show is all about realizing your vision. Now, when we talk about this, and I have spoken about this type of topic periodically throughout the year. We started off the year talking about New Year's resolutions with Ronaldo and Lawrence. So we've spoken to different guests throughout the year about vision and goal setting. Why is that? Well, it's because I am very passionate about people not wasting their gifts, their talents, and their abilities. Many of us have visions, have dreams, have goals, and unfortunately, we see ourselves as so small that we're not really anything to be able to achieve them, not realizing, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can achieve your goals. Yes, you can. You can because I said so. And the reality is every single person that achieves something, they are just a person just like you and I. So if they can do it, so can you. So what do I do? I try to bring on people of inspiration, people who have done exactly what it is that we're aiming to do, realizing our vision, people who have had a vision and, and thought about it at the concept stage and actually work towards building up so that it becomes a reality. This is what we want to do. And I'm not going to let up on you. What are your New Year's resolutions? Yes, I know it's uh, September. I know we've had the majority of the year, but what goal did you set at the beginning of the year that you still haven't fulfilled? What vision, what business idea, what hobby that you wanted to monetize, what goal, what dream, what uh, it could be something social, it could be something personal. What is it that you've been trying to do, but you haven't quite done it yet? Well, we're going to be talking about realizing your vision today with none other than Dr. Rashada Harry. And if again, if you are watching, I did a special show a few weeks back, Friday Night Live on us, usually on a Tuesday, but I did a special interview and I had a panel of four people and Dr. Rashada was one of those four people. And I was just oh, so blown away. That like, This is not the first time I've been blown away by this lady because I have actually been to one of her events. And my goodness me, if I had lots of hair, it would have just flown straight off my head. That's how impressed I was by this event. And that's not an exaggeration. It was amazing. And she blew me away then. And she blew me away when she was in the interview. I said, no, 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 I have to get you on Tuesday Night Live. We have to have some time and really talk about your story. So who is Dr. Rashada Harry? Let's have a look at some of her credentials. Well, Rashad is recognized as one of the UK's top 100 ethnic minority leaders and that's according to Empower and Yahoo from June 2019. She is the most, she is most recognized for her thoughts on diversity in the workplace, employee engagement, and helping the next generation of talent to reach their potential. She is an enterprise technologist, and she's previously spent nine years at Cisco, and she joined as the only black female 
in a highly competitive sales academy program which spanned across Europe. And she was selected as one of the top 10 graduates from the, from the UK from over 8,000 applicants. And this was during the program that she realized uh, that she believed more needed to be done to bring more diverse talent into the technology industry. So she had a vision. So what did she do? Well, she co-founded and launched the award-winning Your Future, Your Ambition, STEAM initiative. And if you don't know what STEAM stands for, it's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And it was within those subject areas that she launched this initiative in 2012 with the co-founders as a vehicle to help corporate organizations and students connect and help to bridge the diversity gap in STEAM subjects. Rashada has been recognized by the UK Prime Minister for her volunteer work in helping the next generation was awarded the UK's uh, 1,026th Point of Light Award in 2018. She was a finalist in the Win Trade Awards in 2019. She was a winner of a 2017 Women in Technology Awards from Women for Africa. She's a winner of a Top 50 Rising Stars in Technology Award by We Are The City, and as well as being highlighted as the Top 30 Future Leader by the Financial Times in May 2017. She is a STEM ambassador. She volunteered for charity work, and she dedicated her time to projects both in Europe and in Africa. And in addition, if there wasn't enough already, she also mentors women who are wishing to return to work after a career break and those wanting to break into the industry. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the one and only Dr. Rashada Harry. Good evening, my lady. How are you? I'm very well, and thank you so much for that grand and wonderful introduction. Yeah, and <laughs> it's I'll, a pleasure I'll miss the applause. You haven't even said anything yet, but you deserve an applause. I'm going to give you two. And now I'm going to give you another one without talking so that everybody can hear it. Uh, thank you so much. That's because credit where credit is due. And, you know, Again, this is my passion to not just speak to people like yourself with credentials as you have, but also just to get into the real side of your story, how you become who you are. Because there are so many people out there that, yes, they're inspired, but there are others who may feel intimidated. You know, so it's good that we're going to have a discussion and find out who the real Dr. Rashada <laughs> Harry is. We're going to get, no, we won't get too personal, but we're going to talk about your journey. And um, yeah, just get into a little bit about, about yourself and your journey. So, but first of all, tell us, how are you? How has your time been during this lockdown period? How has everything been for you? Do you know what? It's been an unprecedented time. I think, you know, if you have told me, you know, nine months ago that we'd be in a global pandemic, you know, we'd be in a state of crisis, um, I simply wouldn't have believed you. But I think it's also been a really good time for reflection about what, what's important, what's, you know, what's important to you, your families, the people that are close to you, the communities that you're within. And so it's actually been a good time for reflection and appreciation for the fact that we're still here in light of the circumstances. But it's been, it's been a tough time, definitely. It's definitely been one that's enabled me to kind of take a step back, but also helped me to kind of refocus, realign myself to my goals and to my visions. Um, and an opportunity to also reach out to people that I haven't spoken to in a long time and reconnect. So, yeah, it, it's, it's actually, you know, in light of the circumstances, it's there's also been positive aspects to it as well. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? The amount of people I've spoken to that said they've just had a time to actually reach out to and connect with people. I find that the most powerful thing because without a pandemic and without the lockdown, you kind of wonder how we lived, right? It seems so strange that we haven't connected with the people that matter, people that can help, you know, relationships that are beneficial to us. We've just been plowing away, working away. And it's taken something as, 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 as serious as this to kind of stop us in our tracks and just help us to reevaluate and, and, and reprioritize what, what really matters and it's, it's amazing. You're, you're not the first person to say that. Right, yeah. It's definitely been an incredible time. And I think, 
you know, it's, it's also a time when, you know, you can also not only just take a step back, but you can really step forward as well into the things that you want to do. Um, it's an opportunity for you to really kind of think, well, actually, what am I doing here? What's my purpose? What's driving mm -hmm. me? Cutting out the things that caused you stress and anxiety and focusing the things that, you know, enabled you to kind of live your best life and, and work towards being a better you. So I think it's 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 worked well in, in that respect. But, yeah, mm -hmm. they're very difficult time nonetheless. Mm, definitely. Well, we're all glad that you have thrived through it, not just survived through, but thrived through it. And we're glad that you're here with us tonight. Really appreciate you spending your time with us. So let's get into my first question. My first question for you is, I want to know what inspires you the most? Like, what, what is your, I guess you could say, what is your raison d'etre? What is, what is the, the, the core driving force of Dr. Rashada Harry? I think it's to grow and to, co to continue growing. I think one of the things about me is that I'm, I recognize that I don't know everything, but I'm willing to learn. And I'm willing to be the pupil in the situation, uh, regardless of my experience, regardless of my tenure in an industry like I'm in, in technology, there's an opportunity to grow. So the reason why I do what I do is because I want, I want to be able to, to be able to give back what I learn. And I want every young person to be able to say, well, actually, you know, these are things that I've learned because someone's given me that inspiration or someone's given me that insight. And I, I really feel that I, I pride myself on being a person that likes to share knowledge, um, who's happy to, to be approached by, by a younger person or anyone, actually, who, who has a question to ask and that, you know, I can help them find the answer to some of the questions they've got. And I really want to make sure that, you know, every young person can see that there's a role model in, in, in anyone and there's, there's there's an opportunity for them to learn from other people so i really do what i do to make sure that young people you know have an opportunity to meet role models speak to them and i'd like to be one of those those role models and people that they aspire to be and look up to that's that's excellent i love that continuing to grow and willing to be the pupils two powerful yeah. powerful statements because they both take a lot of humility you know the the everybody kind of wants to arrive we live in the instagram generation everything has to be we look great we have everything we need we have landed we've arrived you know not many people show the development not many people are vulnerable enough to say actually i'm not quite there yet i need to grow it's either one end of the scale or the other right oh, other yeah. people are super overconfident or they're so just down on themselves unnecessarily right but i love this this is right down the middle you you're wanting to continue to grow but also willing to be the pupil that's amazing that is amazing sorry can you hear me Yes, I can hear you now. So I lost you for a few seconds there. I can okay, hear you now. No problem, yes. no problem. Yes, right. um, I, I was just complimenting you on those those two qualities because <laughs> I do feel it takes a lot of humility um, mm. to even say, especially you mentioned young people, so that you're willing to be the pupil. That's mm -hmm. quite a powerful thing. How does that manifest in your your experience? I think um, I think I think in my experience, like I know what failure looks like. And I think, you know, the comment that you made just now about, you know, young people saying you have arrived, you know, people often see the outputs of a lot of hard labor, of a lot of sleepless nights, of a lot of anxiety and stress. And, and it's really, I think, it's, it's an appreciation for being the pupil in terms of knowing that you don't have all the answers, reaching out and knowing, you know, when you do need help and when you do need a supportive shoulder or you do need your tribe, you know, I'm, I'm always talking about my tribe. You know, I've got a core set of friends that are very different for me with different skill sets, but absolutely know me and know that, you know, where my strengths are, where my weaknesses are, these are people that I trust. So, you know, being the people means that you can learn from anyone. You can learn from people older than you. I learn particularly a lot from, you know, my nieces and my nephew. <laughs> they teach me a lot daily um, and whenever we get to catch up. But, you know, it's about recognizing that you learn from people from all walks of life. Mm. They may not be on the same path as you, but they've got skills and attributes that you can absolutely take from and bring into your own life to help you achieve your goals. And, you know, for me, young people definitely do not hide their emotions. They don't hide their thoughts. They tell you straight as it is. I think as we get into adulthood, you know, we tend to kind of caveat things and 
sugarcoat things and gently does it. And children, will, young people will tell you straight where you're going wrong, what they don't like. And I really, really appreciate that. So that's kind of really where it comes from. Yes. And, you know, as an ex-teacher, that really does hit home with me. You know, I've had some harsh home truths, even to the point where, and I, I don't mind admitting this, a child walked up to me. This is a year six child. They looked at me, they looked down and they said, sir, look at your shoes. And I knew, <laughs> the thing is, I knew I needed to buy a new pair of shoes. It was in my, it was on my agenda. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to have to wear this again. I'm just caught up in the cycle. Of it. But she told me straight to my face. I put her in detention, you know, and it gave her lines. But, um, yeah, she told me the truth. No, no, really, I did. Yeah, I did. For her honesty. <laughs> For her transparency. Yes, yes, yes. She was too honest. No, no, no. There's such a thing as too much honesty. Come on now. You can't have that. But no, young people, you're, you're 100% right, I think. Young people will always tell you the truth, whether we like it or not. And I think that either we see the value in that or we will put up a shield and ignore it and say that it's not valid, maybe because of their life experience or because of their age or presumed life experience, I guess. But, you know, that, yeah. that's amazing. Now, I, I, I have to ask you this question only because there are certain people out there that are quite cynical. And it's not my regular audience, but somebody may happen upon this. And they, they, they might, the doctor of what? These people are doctors. Which doctor is she now? Which doctor? Can you just clarify, just for those <laughs> cynical people out there? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no. And, I, and, it's, and it's a good question, right? I, I, you'd be surprised how many people ask me. Um, right. So I was awarded an honorary doctorate um, in philosophy for my work in contributing to the um, ambitions of young people in science, technology, engineering, and maths. And I actually was given the doctorate from my um, my previous undergraduate university, um, London Metropolitan. Um, and there's a story, I it's actually- Met I went to London Met too. Did you? Okay. Yeah, crazy. That's crazy, yeah. So, yeah, so, um, so I read law there, and there's actually a bit of a story behind that because, um, I really wanted to be a technology lawyer. That was my path. That was what I wanted to do. And um, I unfortunately didn't get the grades that I wanted to get. So very similar experience to a lot of the young people this year um, in light of the exam results. And I was devastated. I think I, I cried for about a week. Wow. And I just, you know, for me, it was I'd done the hours. I'd done the work. I knew I was knowledgeable. But I'm actually dyslexic as well. And wow. I, you know, at the time, it wasn't taken into consideration. And, um, you know, for me, it was something that I'd always kind of struggled with in terms of reconciling because I knew I was intelligent. I knew I could get, you know, the same points across, but it was, wasn't reflective in my exam results. Mm. And so, you know, staying in contact with my university and then seeing my progress and what I've done in the industry since, and then reaching out to me and saying that they're awarding me a honorary doctorate, I was like, wow, that's really nice because, you know, you know, you don't get that grade. And it might be a, you know, some people, you know, pass an exam. You know, you move on. For me, it always great to move me. I was three marks off the grade that I wanted. Um, you know, it didn't impact me too much, but it was always at the back of my mind. But it was really nice for them to kind of come back full circle almost and um, and recognise, you know, some of the great work that myself and my team have been doing. And, you know, to be awarded an honorary doctorate in, in philosophy was was really great. So, yes, it's Dr. Rashad Harry. That's amazing. <laughs> That's, do you know what? Let me give you a round of applause. Oh, and how are we doing, honey? But I'm going to give you a, a, a dragon punch. Even if you didn't play Street Fighter, you're still getting one because that's, that's, <laughs> that's an honor to get a dragon punch. So, that, Thank that, you. That, is, that is amazing. I, I love that story. I, I think, especially because it really hits close to home with my experience of you. I think, from what you've said and from what I experienced, I think we can just fairly blame the university. It's the university's fault because I didn't get the grades I wanted either. Yeah, so I, I think we can just blame. <laughs> no, not really. It, it, naturally, <laughs> these things. I think, I think just experiencing that experience, you've shared your heart, and that's a very real thing, and it's not an easy thing. You know, in adulthood, it, especially when you get into education, you know, it's all about proving what you know. It's all about showing your credentials, showing that you are able, that you're good enough, etc. And it's a very difficult pill to swallow when you know that you haven't quite achieved, or should I say, 
what you've shown academically isn't your full potential. I think that's what really burns when you know that you're more capable of what's written down on a piece of paper. And I think I use that as fuel myself in terms of becoming a teacher to help every single young person, student that I could to realize that they were greater than one letter on a piece of paper. And that actually what they decided to do, if they put their mind to it and they plan and they're consistent and they're disciplined, they will do it. So, uh, so you know, sorry to interrupt you. I, I can't agree anymore. I, I, I literally, as you were saying, I was just remembering like my younger self, and that's absolutely it. Because hard work does pay off, and sometimes you don't get the things that you want, but you find that the lesson is that it takes you to somewhere else that you weren't thinking about. Yeah. So that failure at that point and what I deemed to be a failure actually was a launch pad into something a lot greater for me and, mm. you know, and really was a launch pad for my career in, in technology and, mm. you know, and now your future, your ambition. So, you know, don't fail, don't be afraid to fail, but just fail fast and fail forward. Do you know mm. what I mean? So take the lesson, learn from it and let that be that motivation, like to your, to your example, let that be that motivation that helps get you to the next level because you, you never know when one door closes, 10 might open, but if you keep on looking at that closed door and you're yeah. only focused on that closed door, then that's all you're going to see. And really you're going to miss the opportunities that the other 10 doors are there for. Mm, mm. I love that. I love that. I love that. We're, we're just warming up. This is getting hot now. <laughs> we're just warming up. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is brilliant. Um, I want to move on to my next question now. My next question is a very, I, I think this is the type of thing that, again, goes to our last point. Not many people like to talk about. Now, I want to know, what is your kryptonite? What is the thing that just like every time you face this thing, it's always a challenge. What is the, like your biggest challenge? I think for me, my kryptonite is high standards. Yeah. And I am I I'm motivated by excellence, doing well, you know. I, I represent at through your future ambition a number of large corporate organizations that really rely on myself and the team to deliver an excellent day for young people. And so my kryptonite is when standards drop, <laughs> I'm not happy. Uh -oh. I, I need I need eleven out of ten, I need eleven and twelve out of ten all the time. But at the same time, I also am am, am fortunate to recognise sometimes when you've done enough, right? Mm -hmm. And so my kryptonite can sometimes be that my standards are really really high, and when they don't get met, I'm just that niggling thing in me. I want to just fix it, and you end up kind of burning the candle by just getting to that level of excellence when actually. You need to take a step back and appreciate what you've done so far and mm. knowing that you've done enough. Um, mm. So I think for me, that is is something that I, definitely my, my close friends will tell you. They'll sometimes get a call at one in the morning. Serena, what do you think about this sentence? Does that make sense to you? What message is it, what message is it conveying? Because I'm that focused on making yeah. sure that it's, it's, it's 100%, 110% accurate. Wow, look at that, 150. <laughs> that's amazing. Do you know, I don't know if we can fully call that kryptonite. Maybe that's crypto afternoon or maybe crypto <laughs> morning. Because it's actually a good thing. Like, it results in a good thing, right? So mm -hmm. even though that's, yeah. that's your weakness, but in a sense, that's what's needed. We need people who are going to set the standard and drive for excellence. Please don't leave any comments about this interview or what needs to be improved after. You can send those uh, the emails, send you the email address afterwards. But um, everywhere else is perfectly fine. You can do that. That's great. <laughs> but I think, I think as well, I think you can see, um, you know, when you, when you hold yourself to a high standard, like as I do, and a lot of other people that I, I work with and I'm engaging with day to day do, it's also about appreciating the milestones that you achieve. When you sometimes have a high, have really high standards and you want to do well, you sometimes don't take heed of what you've done. And if you miss a mark, you're sometimes thinking, oh, I'm stuck on that closed door. I'm stuck on just not quite hitting where you wanted to hit. But actually, it's appreciating the journey. And mm. so for me, you know, that is a, a sticking point for me. But I'm working on it. I'm learning. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be the people. 
That's good. That's good. And, and again, for those people watching it, I, I, I'm hoping that it's refreshing for you to hear that when people do achieve things, nobody's perfect. They're just people like you and I, and we all have our faults. We all have our sticking points, but it doesn't, it shouldn't stop us from achieving what it is that we're setting out to do. So I'm going to yeah. take a quick question from the, um, uh, from a viewer. Um, uh, Mr. Paul Morrison, I believe you, you may know Paul. I think you do know Paul. He's saying he's so proud of you, Rashada. Question: I should put my Nottingham accent. No, I'm not. I'm going to do that. Um, <laughs> what are you doing to take time for you? That's a good question. Yeah. What are you doing to take time for you? Okay, and, and hi to Paul. I've known Paul for a number of years. Phenomenal guy. Great mm. mentor great member of the community. Um, so yes, hello, Paul. So I think it's a really good question. And I think it's something that, you know, when I first started my career, um, because I, I, I work in technology, as you mentioned, and I run your future, your ambition, kind of all hours in between. And, you know, you sometimes have to look at kind of balance and, you know, what you're doing that's, that kind of feeds your soul and, you know, is, is nurturing to you outside of the commitments, and obligations that, that you have. And, you know, one of the things that I like to do is really just spend time by myself, connect with my friends. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lover of the arts, um, you know, pre, pre lockdown, you know, I would love to go to a live concert, see live, live musicians. Theatre is something I'm also really passionate about, you know, and just doing things that, you know, you learn from, you can gain creativity from, you know, I'm, I'm really, I really look to things that can inspire me. But I also recognise that, you know, travel is my vice. <laughs> so in lockdown, I've really been suffering. I'm not getting my live music oh, except no. for on Instagram with the verses. I saw the Brandy and Monica last night and I was up till 3 a.m. because that's my thing. Um, but also travelling, going to new places, exploring new cultures. You know, I am a, a, a travel person. That, that's my thing. So that's mm. what I like to do to take time for, for me when I can. Wow. Wow, that's fantastic. So there you go, Paul. And for the rest of you, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in, in the comments, just as Paul has done. And if you're listening to this via the podcast, it's too late. You can't ask any questions. You should tune in live. And we're here live every Tuesday, 8 p.m. So thank you very much, Paul, for that. And thank you, Rashada, for that answer. Now, I want you to tell us briefly, I know I mentioned before about YFYA, how it started. Can you, in a nutshell, just describe what YFYA is, your future, your ambition? What is it? Sure, sure. So, so your future, your ambition, it's really an initiative which is community-led. So um, it, it seeks to educate, inspire and encourage young people across all diversity streams into pursuing careers in science, technology, engineering, the arts and math. And it's something that, you know, is really, really close to my heart. I'm, I'm really passionate about giving back to the next generation. So we work with young people from the age of seven right up to graduate age in helping them to understand about the opportunities um, that careers in STEAM can afford. So we connect them with mentors, with role models, with organisations that they wouldn't ordinarily get an opportunity to meet and engage with. And in doing that, we hope to form a more binding link between education industry and also local communities so we work with a number of large corporate organizations of, of which i'm sure you've heard of but we also work with lots of local community organizations who are doing really great stuff at grassroots level to help um, young people achieve their their aims and aspirations and also realize those as opportunities that's amazing now that sounds like a full-time job <laughs> now this isn't your main thing, is it? No, it isn't. So um, I also work as an enterprise technologist. Um, I work for a very large um, cloud provider um, who is um, doing very well in the industry. But, you know, it, it's not my day job. So, you know, YFRA is something that I'm really passionate about. But I do it in, you know, in my spare time. So I do it at the weekends and then Tuesday evening. In fact, I just came from a, a stakeholder um, call. So we have a weekly call in the lead up to our event. I just came off that before joining here. So it's something that I do in my spare time. As I said, I work with a team of volunteers. It's not just myself, but it's something that, you know, we're really passionate about. So it doesn't actually seem like work. It's, it's, it's enjoyable mm. for the That's most part. Amazing. So you're using your spare time to do this. That, that is yeah. really commendable. I'll give you another round of applause for that. <laughs> amazing. 
I really love that. Um, it just it shows the passion and the drive. Like you can't do something like that with your own spare time consistently, you know, and and sustained unless you really have a passion behind it. So so you know, credit to you. That is that is really good keeping that up. Now, what I want to know is you you mentioned all of this. You mentioned all these big companies, everything else. That, yeah, it's great. You have that as a vision. How on earth does that start? Like, where did you start? How did you uh, uh, commence the project? And was it easy? Yeah. Was it smooth running or was it difficult? If it's if so, what um, the challenges yeah. did you find? I'll probably ask five questions at once just now, but yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> how did it start right. and, and what was the process like? Yeah, so um, I was working at a, another large blue chip tech organization at the time. And, you know, at the time it was a sponsor of the London 2012 Olympics. And I was very involved in the Black Employee Network um, at that time. And myself and my co-founder, you know, had the idea of, you know, how can we make a lasting impact of the London 2012 Olympics to the local community? And as I mentioned, the organization we were working for, Cisco at the time, um, was an Olympic sponsor. And so we reached out to other organizations through the diversity networks to see um, if it was something they would like to come on board with to educate and encourage local people from the community um, in the borough of where the Olympics were taking place to educate young people about what these organizations who sponsor the Olympics do. So admittedly, it was meant to be a one-off event um, in light of the Olympics. We were really, really fortunate that we had 350 young people come to the event we had 14 different organizations come on board to join us, um, including National Grid. And the CEO, or the then CEO of National Grid, um, came and did a keynote for us. And he was so inspired by the conversations, by the light bulb moments the young people had at the event that he encouraged us to do it again and to continue those conversations and to do um, an event annually. And so here we are. So, you know, it, it wasn't for, it wasn't, it wasn't initially meant to be planned as a, as a long-term thing. It, it just, it's evolved into that. And it's something that we're really, really proud of. We've, you know, we've gone from strength to strength, starting with just 350 students to, you know, in 2018, being awarded the Point of Light Award and being recognized by the Prime Minister as a collective, because it's not just me, it's not just the YFY team, but it's a collective of organizations, the corporates, you know, the Deloitte's, the National Grids, the AWS's, um, Blackso, SmithKline, Procter & Gamble, and just to name a few, but it's also the grassroots organizations, like the 100 Black Men of London, mm. like PUSH, which is Persevere Until Something Happens, which is a mentoring organization. It's the City of London Police. It's Cambridge University. It's, it's really down to not only the companies and the organizations, but the people, the volunteers who come and dedicate their time, who are passionate about what they do, who want to share insights with the next generation, to instill in them the things that they wish they had known at that age to help them make more informed decisions about what a career and a, an opportunity that a, is afforded in, a, in an opportunity, sorry, what a, an opportunity is afforded in an industry like STEAM, which covers the science, technology, engineering, arts and maths, as you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I was absolutely blown away. And I can't believe that you started off with only 350. I don't know how many people were there last year when I went. We just shy of a thousand. Just shy of a thousand, I think, were there last year in, in, in October. You know, I'm here because uh, for people that don't know if you're watching, I was actually one of the volunteers for one of Rashad's events. So, you know, I came, I'm like, I'm lost. I'm happy because the Emirates Stadium, I'm an Arsenal fan. But yeah. I, I go there and it's just like, hundreds of volunteers hundreds and i'm yeah. thinking whoa if there's this amount of volunteers how many young people are coming and then when i saw the amount of young people i thought whoa this is amazing but yeah, yeah. it was a it was a fantastic time and you know one of the mo the things that stuck out to me it wasn't just the young people that i was with but talking to some of the people on the stands i think there was some gentleman that came from uh, a, a big uh, tech company. I think it may have been HP, but I may be getting it wrong. And their names, I will never forget this. It was T Tom. Uh, I've forgotten it. <laughs> they, they, they all began with T. I said, I'll never forget it. I've forgotten it. it it's, it's Tom, Tom, and Terry, or something like that. And, and each one of them were all graduates, and they had no background in studying um, computer science, but they had learned on the job as part of the internship.
And they were just talking about how inclusive the company was in just allowing people that had a passion for technology to come in and wherever they are to help them grow from there. Because I did not know that about these companies, that actually some of them have policies like that. I think it's absolutely amazing. And mm -hmm. to know that the young children, while they're still in school, can get a sneak peek at that. And, and many of the other stands as well that were there, they were on the ITV stand direct and the weather. Oh, goodness me. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic day. And, you know, certainly for, for young people, you know, we recognise that not every young person receives information in the same way. You know, myself being dyslexic, I can't sit in front of a screen all day and be presented at. I need something engaging. I need to be hands on with a few things. So, you know, we try to provide a day that's got educational experiences. It's got engaging experiences, but it's also got opportunity for life skills and development as well from at an individual level, because every young person is different. And it's about recognising that difference, but also recognising the organisations that appreciate that difference, that want that diversity in their in their organisations. That and, and to have it reflected at really every level of every level of the management chain. You know, I think, you know, an organisation like ITV, you know, Every year they come with a really engaging activity. It's multiple activities as well because they appreciate that different people learn in different ways and they want to make sure that they are honing into that diverse talent, getting those fresh perspectives and really getting the feedback on how their organisation is viewed as well because to your earlier point, you know, young people don't hold back. You know, if they have a perception about your brand and your organisation, they will share it with you. But how do we work to educate the young people about the opportunities and the and the career paths that they may not have already considered, but are actually the ones for them because they already have the skills based on what they're learning in school, college, and university today. That's uh, it's, it. Really, is amazing, and I, I saw that actively at the time that certain um, um, certain of the um, uh, members on the stand were asking the young people. They were directly asking, so what do you think? They were taking that feedback while I was there, literally. I think it's very smart. It's very, very smart because this is the end user now. And mm -hmm. if you can get that feedback and use it correctly, you're only ever going to improve. But really, really excellent. So I, I want to ask, in terms of, the, it's been eight years now, is that right? So we're going, yeah, and we're going into our, our ninth event um, wow. this November. So it's our ninth yes. annual event. So, Do you know what, people? Yeah. Sorry, I have to interrupt because you cannot forget this date. The date is the 12th of November, and that is the Correct. day I was born. I came oh, into the earth on the 12th of November, and that is when YFY is happening. So there's two things you have to do on that day. In whatever way you can, you need to support this event. And we're going to find out more about how people can do that later. But also you need to send me um, some super malt and um, just uh, get on delivery and uh, order some KFC, have it delivered to my house. Um, and yeah, Super Martin chicken is just a standard um, uh, gift I don't mind receiving every year. Um, sorry, I totally interrupted. I, I, I might, I'm kind of bringing the show down. You, you, you're keeping it nice and corporate and informative and, 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 and serious. I'm just like, I keep dragging it down into the, oh dear. No, Sorry, it's all good. Saying, saying. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? The 12th of November is absolutely the day. I mean, obviously, in light of the pandemic, we would usually have a face to face live at the Emirates Stadium, you know, an engaging day. However, in light of the situation, we are going digital. So it's an opportunity for more young people than ever before to access our event free of charge. So we've got an amazing lineup of workshops and great speakers lined up. It's going to be so exciting. I mean, I personally wish I, you know, I'm not to say it because I, I lead to my FYA, but I really wish that when I was younger, I had the opportunity to, to meet role models that come from a range of diverse backgrounds, people that look like me in organisations that, you know, I would love to work in to kind of have and take the time to meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, answer questions, answer concerns, give me nuggets of inspiration. You know, that's what your future ambition is about. It's about providing opportunities and getting those insights that you sometimes don't get from a classroom or from a career fair, but it's actually a, a different experience. So hopefully that will transpire in a digital format on the 12th of November, but absolutely everyone is welcome to join us and registration is free. <laughs> let's break the internet, people. Let's share this the, the, the website. Let's get 
as many young people on this as possible. Let's spread the word because really it's such a valuable uh, event. You know, it's such a valuable event. I was really, really blown away. And I'm not exaggerating or saying that because you're here. Um, I think I spoke to Mark Martin afterwards. I came out because he was the one who told me about it. I was like, Mark, oh my word. I, yeah. So anyway, so what I want to ask you is, what impact do you feel that you've seen? Naturally, we, I have seen with my own eyes what is happening in the uh, eyes of the young people. It's like this, the eyes light up, like these eureka moments. But in terms of lasting legacy, how have you measured that in terms of the, uh, the, the past eight years coming into a ninth event? What has been the measure of success? The vision initially compared to what you've seen, how has that been over time? And I think it's a really good question because, you know, starting as young as seven, um, it's a very long pipeline <laughs> of, of talent to go into industry. But we do have some success stories. Um, more recently, in our last event, we um, invited Reese. So Reese was a young man that came along to, to YFYA. His uncle um, was actually a, a volunteer the previous years and didn't actually know that he was coming. But um, he joined the event, gosh, four years ago now. He met his mentor from Network Rail at the event. They had an engagement in terms of mentoring and development. He applied for a role and he's, he's working in industry now at Network Rail and he's really enjoying it. And those are the things that we want to see. We want to see that, you know, they come to an event like that. They meet someone from a background that they can relate to. They form a, a long-standing career discussions um, engagement. And actually, they realize their potential and have an opportunity and get that opportunity. And for me, that's the impact. That's what I want to see. I want to see more young people from diverse backgrounds that come from a background like I come from or from a background that you come from or anyone else. But they're actually realizing their own potential and they're actually realizing their dreams in organizations they want to be in. And they're actually making a difference. They're moving the needle. And that's really the, the, the benefit of Wife Way is that we want to see that impact. We've had over 7,000 young people come through our doors. We've seen people go into roles. We've seen people take on work experience opportunities. And we've also seen mentoring happen at our event. And, you know, for us, that's the benefit. You know, if we can change the life of just one person, that's me. That's just job done because that person will use their experience to pay it forward for someone else. And, and that's really what we do it for. And that's definitely what I, I definitely feel I can speak on behalf of the, the YFRI team and the organisations and the volunteers that take their time to, to be at the event. Is That's what we do it for, is for it to, to make sure every young person can see their potential, can realise the opportunity and can form a career in STEAM. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I, I really do think, you know, that applause is for you, for your team, uh, and, and just for seeing it through. Just, you know, the topic for today is realizing your vision. You had a vision and you have done an event, albeit you expected it to be a one off, but then you've been inspired to continue. And actually, you've done that and you've done it again and you've done it again. You know, you, you, you're coming into your ninth event. You know, that's nine years worth of events, nine years worth of impact, I think that's definitely to be applauded. So hats off to you and your team for doing such an excellent job. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I consider my audience and I consider those people who are inspired by your story, but maybe their passion is in something else. Maybe their drive or their, their, their vision is in a different path. What advice do you have for anybody who's out there who's thinking of starting off a new initiative? Will be maybe similar to you, maybe an event, or maybe a new business, or and maybe like you, they're in full time work, you know. And we kind of spoke about side hustles previously. We spoke about entrepreneurship, but what advice from your experience do you feel would be key to people going from that concept stage yeah. to making it a reality? I think it's I think one of the things that entrepreneurship dictates is is passion, drive and motivation, right? I think you've got the passion, you've got the drive, but it's the motivation to get you up every day and doing it and to understand how to pick yourself up when you fail. And I think that people don't talk about failure enough and what that 
what that realistically looks like in everyday life, especially when you've got a new initiative and you really want to get it off the ground and people aren't supporting you or people don't see the, see the vision that you have or perhaps you're not conveying it in the right way. I, I always say, go back to you know, what you're doing it for. What are your aims and aspirations? Who are your, who's your target audience? Who are you hoping to serve? And work backwards from that, right? Meet your, your target audience. Understand what's relevant to them and work backwards to ensure that what you're providing aims to achieve and, and alleviate some of the challenges they have or gives them added value that they haven't already realized. See where those gaps are. Test it, try it out, like fail fast and fail forward. You know, YFA is constantly an iteration of, of, of failures, of learnings, of development and, and, and moving things forward. So test it out, try it out, get feedback, have a tribe. I, I can't stress how important this is. Like your core people around you who will tell you when you're on the wrong path and will say to you, actually, mm, you're kind of veering off from what your goals were, who are going to keep you aligned to what it is you want to do and write it down. I know it sounds like a really simple thing, but write it down. Challenge yourself to, you know, your six months goals, your nine months goals, your 12 months goals. And push yourself but you know tick them off as you as you get there and celebrate the small wins and the small successes you know you can have a high bar for standards but if you don't appreciate the small things you lose sight of what you've achieved and you think you're not getting as far as you are so celebrate the small wins and just do it you know i mean the time is now now more than ever we need um, and certainly in light of the recession we need people to you know who've got those ideas and have got those great business ideas and and, in, and inventions to come forward and, and bring them and bring it to the UK economy. So I say, if you've got an idea, if you've got an initiative, try it, test it, fail, fail fast, fail forward, but get up, learn and develop and continue. Fantastic. You're, you're getting a... Sure, you can! Yeah. A round of applause. <laughs> it means something to somebody out there. <laughs> Even if it does be, did you ever play Street Fighter by any chance? This is not in my I didn't. You never did. No, that's all right. I forgive you. It's fine. You're okay. You're still a good person. You'll you'll be all right. But um, yeah, all right. That's, that that that's just um yeah. Just, don't worry. Just kind of toys, toys. Thing. Don't worry about it. Um, but it is good. It's positive. So that sound. Sure, you can. That's a sound of triumph. Sound sure. of truth. But no, yeah. excellent advice. I love it. Passion, think, drive, motivation, fail yeah. forward, thinking about what failure looks like, talking about writing it down. I am so passionate about writing it down. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm a teacher. Well, I'm still a teacher. Even though I'm not teaching in schools, I'm still a teacher. I have to write things out. I have a whiteboard to my left. I have my medium term plans on there with the tick boxes next to them. I've got my piece of paper with my timetable, my weekly times. I've got my diary in front of me. I have to write down all my daily tasks because the way I see it, especially if something has been delayed in completion. So many people don't do things because they've gone past the deadline to achieve what it was, right? When it's written down, it's there in your face and you're like, okay, I haven't been able to do it thus far. But I'm going to shift this and that to try and still do it. It makes it real and it causes you to not ignore it, right? Because out of sight, out of mind, if you haven't written it down, it's not really a, it's not really a plan, is it? Really I, I agree with that. And I also think there's a, there's, a, there's a piece around imposter syndrome and what that means. Um, so, you know, too often some people don't have role models or don't or they've got such an idea that they think is so novel and new. They don't really know of anyone else who's doing it that they can kind of reach out to. And so they start to panic. So when I use the analogy of, you know, you're a swan, but underneath that water you're flapping because you're worried that you're either going to fail, you're going to fall flat on your face, or no one's going to believe in you, no one's going to support you. And or ultimately, you know, you're just questioning and, you know, self-doubting about whether what you're doing is actually viable and if it's actually going to be successful. And, you know, those sleepless nights kick in. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't talk about is, is what it means to kind of be in that space of anxiety. Because I think with any new project where you're kind of, you know, you're putting your neck out and you're going out on a limb and, and doing something for the first time, 
And, and you know, I, I put my hands up. I suffer from this all the time. Every year we do a YFYA. I get that anxiety of, oh my goodness, are the kids going to come? Are the stakeholders going to be involved? You know, is, are the kids going to enjoy it? Are they going to get value? And, you know, you always have to kind of take a step back and, like I said, look back at past successes, learn from failures, learn from mistakes, and, and really lean on people who can give you that support and guidance. And don't be afraid to ask for that help because. I think sometimes imposter syndrome can be debilitating and it can stop you dead in your tracks, whether you've written it down on your post-it note and you've had your goals. If you don't feel it within yourself that you want to do it, you don't have that confidence, it can really impinge on the great value that you can bring to, to the market or to, to your community with what you're hoping to, to provide to them. Mm, Just to add that in. Most definitely. And no, thank you for adding that in because all of these things are great. Uh, there's Ronaldo here, he's commenting. So well said, just try stuff. Uh, Ronaldo's voice, I keep talking about his voice. It's so brilliant. Do you know Ronaldo? Ronaldo, I, don't I, know. Don't, I, I need to introduce you to He's such okay. a nice guy. He's got such a great American accent. And I, I, can't, even, I can't even do it, but he's well said, just try stuff. I mean, he's, yeah. he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I love Ronaldo. Yeah. But he agrees. That's like the man from Del Monte saying yes. <laughs> That's like the man from Del Monte. <laughs> <That endorsement. laughs> <laughs> thank yeah. you, thank you, Renato. <laughs> Appreciate it. Fantastic. So, do you know what? I need to. Um, I've got some um, comments here that, because unfortunately, this platform is not putting all my comments on the screen. So, I've just logged into Facebook and say hi to all the people who are watching on Facebook. Shout out to Jabina Ture, one of my mentees. Um, Rashida, I haven't seen for a long time. So, I'm interviewing Rashada, but Rashida's watching. <laughs> He's also a friend. Um, and um, yeah, Leanne Diaz, hello to all of you watching. Uh, I didn't even know that you were watching and all the people who have been commenting as well. You've got a few seconds left to just plug in your questions. If you have any more questions for Rashada, just before we close out. But I want to kind of go back to uh, the event. You mentioned that it's online and yes. you mentioned that, um, uh, yeah, you've had to adjust because of the pandemic. But I guess this means that you've kind of got no limits on the size of the audience, right? Is that right? Absolutely. It's um, wow. so that's up so ordinarily when we're in when we're in, when we're on site at the Emirates, we we limit it to a thousand young people. However, now it's going to be accessible online, and you know there's no product you need to download. You can view it from your browser. All you need to do is register. So tell a friend. Tell a friend. It's an absolute great opportunity to hear directly from the organizations about the skills and, and opportunities that are available. The theme of, the, of this year's event is creating a sustainable tomorrow. And I think it's ever more, it's, it's, it's so relevant now because of the way things are going in terms of the skill sources that we have in the UK as it relates to um, STEAM skills and also around kind of the job market and, and perspective opportunities for young people. So we're going to be having sessions like, you know, how do you manage your brand when you come into a new organisation? How do you negotiate your first salary, right? What are the benefits you look for when you're joining a new organisation? How to manage your manager? What are the interview tips and tricks that you need? What are the CV faux pas that you should be avoiding? What are the how do you can you convey yourself in a digital way across Zoom when you're going for your first interview? How do you manage a panel conversation? So some of the real relevant skills that I think young people absolutely need when they're entering the market, but also you know some of the opportunities in terms of um, insight days, work experience opportunities, apprenticeship opportunities. You know it's it's all there for the taking. All you have to do is just sign up, turn up, be prepared and come with some great questions and also do the mentoring as well. You can always learn from, from your peers and also the people in the industry. Most definitely. And I, I want to encourage people, if you are not connected with Dr. Rashada Harry, please have a look at the details at the bottom of the screen. If you're listening from the podcast, this is something you can still action. It's not too late. You haven't missed that. Even though you're not live, you should be live every week. Um, you can find <laughs> Rashada on uh, social media platforms so on Twitter, uh, at Rashada Harry. And you can also search for at YFYA UK. And on LinkedIn, it's the same at Dr. Rashada Harry. And you can also search for your future, your ambition on LinkedIn. And then if you go to Instagram, you can search for Rashada.Harry. 
and then also YFYA UK. And also on YouTube, you can have a look for YFYA UK. And you can see all of the great things that have happened in previous years at your future, your ambition, because uh, I am not exaggerating. It is probably one of the most amazing events I've seen put together for young young people. It, re it just it does everything that usually people would only talk about that doesn't quite manifest. It, it manifests, like it's there. And it's it's amazing. I can't compliment it enough. So people get involved. I see one, two questions. We're going to take two questions from the audience, and then uh, we'll close out. Uh, again, I have to thank you so much for your time. We'll take a question here from Wayne. Maybe he missed the question at the top of the show. He's asking, who inspired you to get to where you are now, and how do you keep that fire burning? That's good. How do you keep that fire <laughs> Yeah, that's, burning? I mean, I think it's, um, you know, there wasn't, kind of one particular person, but it was actually a series of different individuals. Um, for me, um, certainly, you know, when I was at school growing up, you know, I was always quite good at sports. And I remember telling my teacher at the time, you know, I want to be a technology lawyer and I want to work in, in this space. And they were like, oh, you're good at sports, stick with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it just, it just put me in a box. And I've, I've never liked being in a box. And so all the mentors and people that have inspired me over the over the years don't like to be put in boxes. And that's what keeps my fire kind of going is that I'm not in a box. I mean, there's no box around me. I'm happy to try new things and develop myself and be the pupil and learn and grow. So that's what motivates me. And, you know, probably the innate fear of, you know, deep down of, you know, I guess, being homeless and, and not having the opportunities and not having a roof over my head, that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me motivated every day. And, and not only that for myself, but for the next young person behind me is giving them an opportunity that we didn't have, right? Or paving the way so that they have got the opportunity that, you know, we sometimes have struggled for as, as kind of the older generations, right? Um, mm. So I think that the things that we do now is making it easier for those people coming behind us. And I use the I use this expression all the time. I've got two hands, one to help myself to get myself up every day and one to help the person next to me. And the premise is that they do the same thing, help themselves and then help the person next to them. So it's easier for the next generation not to have the same struggles, the same challenges, because we all have them and they are there, but to make mm. it easier for them to, to succeed. So I hope that's answered your question. Oh, I think it has. I think it has. Thank you very much for that. And uh, one more from Wayne again. He's asking, what books do you read to inspire you as well? So I, <laughs> and the thing is for 2020, that's on my list is to do more reading. Um, but there's a number of, of, of books that, that keep me grounded um, from a spiritual perspective, um, acts of faith. Is, is something that I, I continue to read and, and keeps me kind of centered. Um, I, I actually don't particularly read a particular author. If anything takes to me, then I, I pick it up. Um, I've, I've recently picked up a really, really um, interesting read um, on um, white fragility in light of Black Lives Matter. So that's something I'm currently reading. Um, I'm also um, reading a lot, of, a lot on kind of emotional intelligence that really inspires me so how people think um and what inspires them to do the things that they do uh, are some of the things that i'm i'm currently really interested in so the emotional intelligence in terms of making decisions and understanding why people make the decisions that they do is something that i'm currently reading at the moment Brilliant. but i'll Brilliant. share that on my I, i've got a couple of authors idea and i can't remember the, all their names but i might i'll tweet it so if you follow me on twitter um i'll post a few book recommendations Excellent. There we go. And after all that, Wayne says thanks. No <laughs> so I also would like to thank you, as well as many viewers. This comments coming in now. <clears throat> um, yeah, comments coming in. Uh, thank you. And uh, again, another one here sounds very handy, simple but necessary skills and tips. So people are grateful. I am none more than myself. None more than myself i am so grateful that you've managed to join us this evening especially for the fact that you've had another meeting beforehand as well and you've still managed to join us tonight for this um, i really really do appreciate you spending your time with us thank you so much and hopefully we'll be able to have a, another interview sometime in the future as well and kind of catch up on how things have developed 
Yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be very happy to. And I've got to say, AC, you know, what you're doing here is great. I think, you know, you're spreading messages, you're connecting people that wouldn't have ordinarily connected. That's the value of community. And, you know, so thank you to you for inviting me and, and having me on for the second time. And I'd be very happy to come back again. So thanks so much. No problem. Thank you so much. And everybody, let's say goodbye to Rashada. She's going to get a round of applause as she goes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good people. What a show. Have you enjoyed the show as much as I have? We've got Paul Morrison here saying thank you, OC. Great interview. Rashada, keep on being inspirational and I look forward to seeing you again face to face soon we got thanks there from Wayne and we got thanks as well from Ronaldo and we've got other thanks coming in from comments that I can't even share from my phone but good people thank you so much thank you for joining this show is not the same without your interaction without your support continue to support what we are doing here in the honing blog what I'm doing through Edgeware Education like share and subscribe to us on every platform but most importantly I want you guys to have a look at these contacts at the bottom there and follow, 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 follow Rashada, follow Dr. Rashada, official doctor. You see, I have doctor on my show. I'm going to go and talk to my mother and say, I have a doctor on my show. Hey, it's a real doctor, a real doctor. But yeah, follow her and follow YFYA and get involved. The thing is, you may think to yourself, okay, I don't need to get to this event. Maybe you could volunteer. Maybe you know somebody else who needs to be at an event like this to help them with their future and with their career. So find the links, share the links, and let's make this the biggest event that they've ever had, ever. That's what we want to do. Okay, good people, I would like to wish you all a good night. Take care. Join us again on Thursday for another Forex one on one session. Join us again next week for another Tuesday night live here in the Honing Block. Take care. God bless. And have yourselves a great rest of the week.